My next guest has a buy on the stock, still sees 50% upside, even with the, it trading still around a board multiple of 35. Jason Kupferberg covers the payment stocks at Bank of America, and he joins me now. Jason, welcome. Thank you. PayPal has been like the story that can't get anything right over the past year, you know? I mean, there's, there's a lot of people even looking back and saying maybe they shouldn't have done the, the PayPal eBay split off and... You know, they've kind of it seems like they're searching around for the right partner or the right vision of, of the future. Why do you like the stock and what do you think they could do here to unlock that value? 2021 was kind of a year of two halves for PayPal. In the first half of 2021, they were continuing to ride the wave of increased e-com spending um, as we had not yet really fully reopened after the first phase of the pandemic. They had an extremely upbeat analyst day in February of 2021. The stock did reach around 300 in the spring of last year, and they were continuing to get significant benefits from stimulus that was coursing through the veins of the economy. Fast forward to the second half of the year, and particularly the third quarter earnings report in November, and they had to backtrack a bit on their outlook for 2021. While they are coming out ahead of where they originally expected to at the start of the year, they did get a little too aggressive during the course of the year in terms of the magnitude with which they raised their guidance. But we still believe that their overarching strategy towards becoming a super app makes a lot of sense, and we think that they're very well positioned. I have to imagine what we've heard from Visa is positive for a lot of names in the payment space on just the economics of, do we call it post-pandemic? I mean, it just seems like there is a little bit of a, of a pickup lately. Should that lift all boats? It will lift all boats to varying degrees, arguably. But both Visa and MasterCard did make some positive comments around the resiliency of e-commerce spending specifically in the context of their overall portfolio, despite the fact that we've gone through uh, some amount of reopening. Now, obviously, a little bit of that went backwards with Omicron over the last couple of months. So around the edges, you would expect that to be uh, a little bit of a benefit and a tailwind to a company like PayPal. Tell me about the super app and why you like uh, that concept when it seems like this is a world that benefits from specialization and narrowness. And we hear a lot of other I guess you could call them fintech apps like Robinhood from a different point of view, kind of want to be everything to everybody. Is that really the right approach for PayPal? You're right. The, the race is definitely on to see who will be the winner or the winners in the context of this pursuit of the super app strategy. But one advantage that's very important that we think PayPal enjoys is, is its huge entrenched base of active users, both on the consumer side and the merchant side of their network. So that's very difficult for anyone else to replicate. And so as they move beyond their traditional core checkout button service and move into areas like buy now, pay later and crypto equity trading, savings accounts, et cetera, we think that they have an excellent chance to be one of the long-term winners in that super app battle. And finally, just give us a little bit of a curtain raiser tonight. It sounds like you're less worried about revenue than maybe profit margins. Very true. Very true. Um, they did put a initial marker out there last quarter for about 18 percent revenue growth in 2022. On a constant currency basis, we think something in that neighborhood is still achievable. Maybe it's 16, 17. I don't think it's much lower than that. On margins, though, we do think that the uh, sell side consensus um, of sell side analysts is a little bit too high. There are going to be some margin headwinds in 2022 most notably some uh, normalize, normalization of provision expense uh, as it relates to the uh, loans that they have on their balance sheet after they were able to reverse a lot of those provisions during the course of 2021. So that may be an underappreciated uh, headwind in 2022. But the good news is many investors that we speak to, we believe, already understand this dynamic quite well. All right. You think it's worth 265. You've got a buy rating and we'll see what tonight brings. Jason, thanks for joining us today.